everybody, so welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing okay. Today's video is going to be an in-depth review on this book, which is Hope by Tom Parker. I've waited so long to be able to get my hands on this, so if you'd like to see the full review and what my thoughts are on this, stay tuned. Okay, let's have a little talk about the author. The book is by Tom Parker. He was best known for being in the band The Wanted, and as you probably all heard, he died at the end of March at the age of 33 from an inoperable glioblastoma, which is a type of brain cancer. In this book, it, it talks about his early life, most of the things that he did with the group, and then towards the end, it focuses on like the positive side of the charity work that he did. So it was in October 2020, Tom was diagnosed with a stage 4 glioblastoma that begins in the brain. He worked hard to raise awareness of the condition, including an organising a massive concert ahead of Stand Up a Cancer in the autumn of 2021. He joined his bandmates when he put on the Most Wanted Tour back in March to huge audiences of fans. And then there's a quote on the back that says, I saw like a tiny light in the distance, always guiding me to try, as long as I do my best that's all anybody can ask for this book is it isn't about dying it's about finding hope in any situation that you're dealing with okay let's talk about each chapter so the first chapter is a foreword from tom's mum so it's basically t talking about what tom was like as a person things he was in it was a child i never knew that he he was a huge book wanderers fan i know that's pretty much every little boys dream that they always either want to be a footballer or want to be a singer so says that he loves singing almost anything so and then everybody knew he was into things like genesis motown rock and northern soul at the tender age of five year old i mean his older brother wasn't a fan of it but tom seemed to like it so from everything from school nativity plays which we've all done to big summer concerts that he did at school he would be like the, he was like the John Barrowman of the show and the scene as he grew up he drew many passions of football and gymnastics being just a couple and the whole family full of Wanderers FC and I'm sure this is every boy's dream that he probably would have loved to have played for the Bolton Wanderers season ticket holder he used to always go to every match home or away whatever the weather and then it focuses on the the natural positivity that he that he had during his treatment for this horrible disease and everything that he did this because he did this massive campaign to try and raise awareness for funding because this disease there is quite a, there is quite very low funding because in, later on in this book in the towards the, the back of the book it does say that one percent of funding goes to this type of cancer which we'll get on to later in the video so part one focuses on his Bolton beginners and his childhood so it says he grew up in Bol grew up in Bolton in a working class area and it says that he grew up in Tonjmoor it was a family of four like one older brother and it was showing you the different jobs that his mum worked for and he's saying that the the jobs that the parents had it's it does, it does sound something a bit like out of Oliver Twist but it was common back then this was in the 60s it was like working for the cotton mill and they were seeing the career education like being in the scene from a film called Kez which is a Ken Loach film anything I will also give a mention to that in the description box it is a 1969 film it says there's supposed to be a iconic scene from there where there's a youth employment office and it is presented with a very limited option and then and it says yeah who would have thought last year Tom's mum would go, go into higher education do a degree in English literature and then become a English teacher at the age of 60 it just shows that age doesn't matter and you can do anything that you put you set your mind to and then they're saying that by the age he's like shortly before Tom was born the factory jobs were starting to go and then they were like putting it says they're putting long areas of I was a manual labour in to make ends meet and to have a roof over both the kids' heads and every birthday and Christmas they wanted everything they'd always asked for. It also has exclusive photos in here so this shows you what Tom looked like as a little boy. This personal one is my favourite this was taken from a 
family Christmas so I just love seeing him so so happy he was always the cheekiest in the room he always knew how to light up a room I'm sure a lot of fans would probably say that and he had this amazing he would have had this amazing golden glow about him and it was just he's very humble gentle and soft but strong in what he wants this is what his primary and secondary photos look like it says here a perfectly instant choir boy at school and then at 16 a totally different image and then this was taken shortly after the band got together and this was taken at a concert in aid of help for heroes which is a soldiers charity i'm guessing this was 12 years ago and then this was a concert in tokyo so yeah i love seeing some of these photos because although i've only been a fan of these for a couple of months you do get to see some of the amazing things that he has achieved and what they've achieved together so this was the word of mouth tour in 2014 this was the last tour they did before the split i also like the butterfly theme on the on the pages it's also got this on the back cover too and it doesn't show you all of the things that they've done together but there was some key highlights so the last tour that they did that was the summer time ball and this was taken from i think it was the premiere of their show the one in life which is a reality tv show i'll be sure to leave links to all the episodes in the description box below and then these photos here when he met kelsey who was his wife and then the, and then at the back the last photo was from the wedding and everything that they made together so overall this is a chapter i really enjoy reading this chapter because it focuses on the positive things you get to see what he was really into as a child and what he was like in his school days next up this chapter is focusing on how he's wet how he met his wife kelsey so it was in december 2009 it was out in a nightclub in london's west end and she was with pixie lock who was our best friend from school and when they first met it, it can be a little bit awkward like i'm sure we've all had awkward first meetings so they're saying that i'm in a van and then they're saying we've not who's not got a name yet and then what happened was i sent a text to the only kelsey that was in my phone it turned out to be a guy i knew from bolton and they're saying it was coming towards the end of the first year as a group and it said on the last day before they went home for christmas they had a recorded performance for a kids tv show and now i remember what tv show that was it was Tear My Friday by Sam and Mark that was on CBC in 2010. It was very similar to TFI what they used to show on Channel 4 in the 90s and Sam and Mark did a lot of show like their own spin on a lot of popular TV shows that did Sam and Mark's Big Weekend In which is very similar to Ant and Dex Saturday Night Takeaway that even the studio looks very similar to that and they were saying that they had a, it was a tv show where they had this terrible magician i don't really know i don't really remember a bad magician but it says that there is one anyway it says during rehearsals i couldn't believe how bad the magician was when i felt personally offended by his tricks and then they're saying that tom and max went straight in the tree straight to houston to get the train back home to bolton and then he got a text and then he was saying that it was that girl Kelsey that he met in, in the nightclub and he ended up staying on the phone until we pulled in at Manchester and he said I gave Max a hug and said goodbye and then continued on to Bolton and um, it said poor Max must have been bored out of his mind so they were texting each other in the summer holidays it was a she was a 19 year old at the time and then it focuses on the first year in a relationship and then eventually went on to get married in 2018 and then they had two children which we will talk about later in the video okay next chapter is called auditions which i never knew was how the one it got together because i always thought you either done it through x factor or you might have met through social media which was that around in 2010 who knows anyway so i want to give a couple of mentions to this chapter and i quote believe in yourself hard enough approach any challenge with a good mental attitude stay open-minded giving things a try and just do your best that's all we can really ask for yourself this is one of my favorite quotes out of the whole book because it centers around the whole theme of this of this title which is finding hope in whatever situation that we're dealing with and we are all guilty of doing this that we we do tend to 
put ourselves down a little bit, whether that be we're incapable of doing what we're saying or we're claiming we're incapable of doing it, or if it's just things that are out of your hands, like where you might have been. Yeah, that could contribute to not being able to achieve your lifelong dreams. So it shows in, in the book, it mentions how you travel down to London to do an audition for a five piece boy band. And on the way down to the final audition, he's saying he had to change at Manchester and he looked like a bad boy. So this was where he ended up meeting Max. Now, I never knew that two of the band met on a train. There's another group that I'm into. They also met on a train. And I just think, it just seems to be a bit of a common denominator when groups start out. You meet someone on a train and then they just happen to be, end up making, and how these ended up making the final five together, well, the last 12 before it became the final five. And then I'm sure one of them would have been like, I've seen you before, we met on a train. So they were in a bit of a, they were in different groups before and I never knew Max was on the X Factor in a different group. I'm not sure if I watched that series I think that might have been the first series, but I think I was only about three year old, so I probably won't remember. And then every, it says that everyone there was a little bit taken back. And then, I mean, who would have thought a lot of your family would think your son would audition for a five piece boy band and that you'd move into a house in London. And then, of course, it says in the book that his mum didn't believe any of it until they had a copy of the first single, which is called All Time Law in her hands. In this chapter, it mentions the the audition, and then when they got to know the rest of the band, so you had Max, who they met on the train, and I quote, Jay, a little goofball who always knew how to make them laugh and keep a good spirit. Siva was the most handsome man I ever met. He had been working towards a career in modelling, but I'm glad he ended up in the van with us lot instead. And then you had the baby-faced Nathan, who was still too young to go out, and then we felt like we were giving him a bit of responsibility. The very young and innocent Nathan Sykes actually put forward the wanted and we all took it straight away and then they said they just needed to find some fans. Nathan was actually still in school when they were getting started. I think he was about, was it 15 I think he was because you can audition at 15 because I have seen quite a few groups with a 15 year old and how they were getting to know each other they were into they have very different hobbies, they were into watching a reality TV show called The Office, which I haven't heard of, but I'm sure, I probably, if I do a little bit of research, I'm sure the picture might come up and I think, oh, I think I remember that, I think I heard somebody mention that. And then it talks about a series that they used to do called One a Wednesday, where they would upload a new video every week. I still watch these to give an insight of what they were doing and who they were as people. I've only just discovered these earlier this year because I, it was at the beginning of March that I actually booked to see this group and it was only three days later that I actually saw them and I was really looking forward to seeing what they were like as a group. I know they were big when I was, when I was 10 so I was still in primary school at that point but every time I hear a lot of their songs I feel like I'm back in a primary school. Okay, next. Next up is hiatus. Now, the way hiatus is, it's where a group decides to take a break and to go off and do their own thing. They did a lot of stuff in America where they released the third album, which is called Weird of Mouth, and then they did the tour back in the March 2014, and then at the end of that year, the split. So, in the book, Tom went, went off and did a couple of TV appearances. He did Celebrity Master Chef, which he said it was a lifelong ambition of his, and he ended up coming second. In the program, it says he has a a chicken and bacon pie for the history book, so I am looking forward to see how they managed to do it Parker style. And then he did a Channel 4 show called The Jump, which was a multi-sports program which involved skiing, snowboarding. It was most of the sports that you see in the Winter Olympic Games, which we've just had in February of this year. He was... Training as a stand-in in case somebody got hurt and had to drop out. So, and he actually stepped in for a hobby of city actress, Tina Hobby, who found a cicada shoulder during practice and then Tom ended up having to compete. He had a brilliant time and he managed to finish third, which is exceptional. And I never knew. Earlier in the book, I did say he was, a, he was nearly a professional snowboarder, but then he ended up packing it in for, I'm guessing, 
because you ended up doing the band and then you have some more of these pictures here this was when you, you had two children the first one you had a little girl called Aurelia and a little boy named Bo and then there's some more of that so all these pictures here and then this is going on to the reason that the band got back together was because he had been diagnosed with a terminal brain tumour and he wanted to get done as much done as possible and I've read in this book that glioblastoma sufferers don't last longer than 12 to 18 months which is a year and a half so he lasted and I mean what was remarkable was he lasted even beyond the what the doctor said and then he managed to and how he managed to do several shows where they brought him on for the last song so the reunion came after they did a charity concert at the Royal Albert Hall before Christmas it was in aid of Stand Up With Cancer you had Becky Hill, Liam Payne, Ed Sharon you had I think it was Anne Marie and then obviously the one that went on at the end and then after Christmas they went on their most wanted tour which happened in May I also vlogged that day so I will be able to link that in the description box below and then backstage he was really wanting to go back go up where with them and then he was saying that he had to wait at least like best part of an hour and then he they brought him up for the last song sadly he didn't come up for the, the he wasn't a, a hour one that we went to because he was in Spain undergoing treatment for his brain tumour but the following night he joined for the encore and then in the last show in Liverpool they brought him up for the second song and then during the encore as well and then you had like all of them on the race platform and then for the last song glad you came the two went off onto the main stage whilst the others stayed with them and it was just so reassuring they made him really feel at home it was like distracting him from everything he was going through and then it was just that amount of unconditional love for this incredible gentleman this is why i really really love these boys i really enjoyed the gig it was very it was a very emotional night because he wasn't yes he may not have physically been there but they did include him in the two our visuals and they also give a mention and then they did a one minute applause and then mentioned that they were donating one pound to the brain tumor charity for all the tickets sold across the uk okay overall this is a brilliant book it's very it is sad in part but it is a very heartwarming tale about the situation in his situation and how he managed to find hope in everything that he did and how he managed to stay as positive as possible how he was able to don't be still be a loving husband a daughter dad and still be a boy band superstar and as Siva said Tom Parker is an absolute hero so that is it guys I really hope you guys enjoyed my review on Hope My Inspirational Life by Tom Parker I suggest that I highly recommend that you get your hands on this I would definitely give this book five stars it has gotten five stars across the board and it has been number one in the Sunday Times bestseller for the last two weeks it may still be number one who knows I'll be sure to leave the link to the book in the description box below be sure to comment down below and hit the bell and I'll see you all very soon for another video thanks for watching